Hello and welcome to my video for today. Um, today I'm going to be reading from uh, my book that I had made. This is not a, a, truly a book that I had written, but once upon a time uh, I had a little gift shop called Persnickety Primitives and uh, I still do a lot of my crafts under that name uh, that I, I take to a gift shop. But uh, during that time I did, I, I did a blog for a while and I printed out some of those and I've got a book here, Persnickety, Persnickety Primitives Blog. And I'm going to be reading, I'm gonna have a little series here and reading on some of the, the old timey, as they used to say, uh, collectibles and crafts and things that I wrote about during that time and things that I treasure in my own home. So I hope that you'll stay with us and uh, listen to my story. Be back in a minute. <music> was my introduction uh, to is this remembering and recreating the best part of our past um, this was January the 11th 2011 it says we all remember special events in our childhood things that made us feel special that we wish we could recreate there's something magical about reaching back in time to a place where things were simpler and much less complicated isn't that the truth those special memories are what kept me grounded in a world full of turbulence. Even more so today, when life is much more turbulent with internet connections, email, Twitter, Facebook, cell phones, endless emails, and video games. We are constantly being beeped, bumped, twanged, you name it. So it is, we are all looking for something to keep us grounded in sanity. From this desire was born Persnickety Primitives. Persnickety Primitives is a physical location, a primitive cabin full of genuinely old and reproduction primitive decor items. We have treenware, primitive and colonial dolls, forged iron eating utensils, primitive quilts, battery operated candles, sconces, old cookware, old sad irons, old kitchen utensils, primitive pantry cakes, potpourri and rose hips, primitive wall art and samplers, shoe fly screens, candles and tarts, a little bit of everything from the primitive era. Also, I am re recreating the best of my childhood, memories that still warm my soul and spirit. This blog is intended to provide a resource to guide you into the primitive decorating style to create a warm, inviting home, as well as a place to learn about the old ways. Well, We'll explore these things, such as butter churns, baking primitive pantry cakes, coffee and tea staining, paper and fabrics. We'll also look at small antiques and collectibles and even have some available for you. Stay tuned and visit us often. The first thing that I, uh, first article actually that I, I wrote was about the old well. And I was inspired by the old well at my grandparents' house in Kentucky. Um, and you'll hear here just a little bit how that come to pass. So I won't get into that, but I'm going to read this to you. We're going to be looking at things and uh, some primitive things. So this, like I said, is part of a series. It says, The Well. When I was a child, I loved going to visit my maternal grandparents that lived just outside of Vanceburg, Kentucky. They are responsible to a large extent for instilling the love of the primitive lifestyle in me. You will hear a lot about them in this blog. They lived through the woods and on top of a hill. It was their little piece of heaven. Just outside their back door sat the well. Every day we would lower the bucket on the end of a rope down into the deep dark well with a pulley that was attached to the roof of the well house. The bucket was weighted slightly on one side so it would tip just right for filling when it hit the cool water as we lowered the bucket. 
Once we heard the, ba the bucket hit the water, we gave the rope just a little more slack, allowing the water to run into the bucket. Once the, w once the bucket was full, we carefully pulled the rope hand over hand through the pulley until the bucket was at the top. We leaned forward over the side of the well house until we could reach the bale of the bucket. We would pull the bucket back toward us and let it rest on the shelf built conveniently inside the well house. Papa kept a dipper hanging on the outside of the well house. Taking a long drink of the well's cool water was heaven. Not only was the water refreshing, the memories that linger from those childhood days continue to refresh my mind as an adult. Recently, I have thought about that well many times. One day, on one of my regular antiquing excursions, I came across an old wooden pulley in a shop. Immediately, my mind was drawn back to Papa's well. I bought the pulley that day, not knowing what I would do with it. I just knew that pulley had to come home with me. I put it away with some of my other treasures. During the recent Christmas season, my brother came to our house for a visit. When we got together, we when we get together, we find ourselves remembering, reminiscing, I'm sorry, about what was, was and dreaming about what might be. He is my brother, but also my soulmate. We dreamed a lot alike. I mentioned to him that I had been thinking about Papa's well and all of the memories it represented. As we talked, he added a few of his own memories. I shared that I would love to have a, a replica of that old well sitting just outside of the Persnickety Primitive's cabin. I showed him my treasure, the pulley, that I had put away. We talked about what the well looked like and decided that it should look as much like Papa's well as possible. Wendell added that it should be made of hemlock wood so it would weather to a wonderful silver gray, just like Papal's well. It would also have to have a tin roof, just like Papal's well. The more we talked, the more we had it all recreated in our minds. I said, you should be the one to build it. He agreed. Much to my delight, he called me in a few short days and asked me if I had decided where I would place the well. I couldn't believe he had completed it so soon. He and his friend borrowed a trailer and brought the well to our house and set it on some blocks. As an added surprise, he had handmade a wooden bucket with a rope handle. Such a work of art. This morning, my brother called me and he said he was coming to bring the, the rope to place on the pulley and the bucket. He also put in two handmade pegs, one to hang the coiled rope on and the other to hang a drinking cup on. He stood back and said, now the well is finished. Papa would be proud and I have a wonderful lifetime of memories. And I'm not sure if you can see this or not. I'll turn it around, but it's very small. There's some pictures of the well. Uh, we'll try to get it up here where you can see. Maybe you can see and maybe you can't, but that's, that's what I hope anyway. Okay, um, might have one more story. But lots of stories and this one is about wooden bowls it's a, a train wear is what we call the train wear some people might not recognize that name unless you are a, a dealer or collector of primitives but we're going to talk to you about that I've had several ask people ask what is train wear train wear is the old name for small handcrafted wooden items in the old days before everything we used was made in China or some other medium, people were far from stores and had to make do with what they had. Since the early settlers were surrounded by mature, de de deciduous, that's a hard word for me to say, deciduous forest filled with hardwoods, there was no shortage of material from which to carve the kitchen tools that they needed. All trainware is individually hand-shaped and gouged, making every one unique in its own way. Strength, durability and a pleasant shape are what make it a sought after collectible. The most commonly used woods are cherry, maple, birch, beech, and walnut. Proper care of your train wear simply means washing by hand and an occasional oiling with mineral or olive oil. The large bowl pictured in the first picture in the in the bowl rack is a true antique from my own collection. I have owned and used it for years and just looks it looks better and better year after year. It is genuine wood. Authentic wooden pieces command a handsome price these days, but reproduction trainware is available at flea markets and primitive shops. 
the two smaller bowls and the bowl rack and the bowls in the other pictures are reproduction and examples of the trim ware that will be available for sale in our line at Persnickety Primitives. Several of our pieces are made in the USA while others are imported. We have a full line of trim ware pieces including large dough bowls, nanny's fixin' bowl, centerpiece bowls, scoops, sconces, peels, and ladles. These are made of resin and not recommended to come into contact with food. I have them all over my house and use them for centerpieces, candles, and whatever else strikes my fancy. They create such a warm feeling in your home. Add a few primitive grungy lights to your centerpiece and you have a true primitive spirit. The bowl rack and primitive tea towels are also available in the shop. Check back often for more primitive home decor items and tips. Okay, I'm going to, at the end of this, I'm going to post a few pictures of, a, of some trainware that I have. I have two very large bowls that uh, I bought in an antique shop, and they are actually from England. Um, they are beautiful, beautiful pieces, and they also have the patches in them. They have uh, like metal patches, and people used to do that. They wouldn't throw away their trainware if it got a crack in it boy they would just go ahead and patch that with some tin and they would just keep on using it so i i treasure that my bowls have been been uh, patched so like i said i'm going to put some uh, right at the end of, of this video and um i'm trying to see here i think what i'll do the very next time we're going to, to talk about creating primitive pantry cakes I love primitive pantry cakes and I have a recipe that I'm going to share of how to make the pantry cakes and they are kind of seasoned a little bit with cinnamon and cloves and they make your house smell so good. So I'm going to show you some of those things and uh, so that's going to be our very next video. So if you will stay tuned uh, and come back for the next video, we're going to have a lot more goodies and I have some stories to read. And as I've told you before, I'm waiting on my van to get the refrigerator replaced so we can go, uh, go back and, and travel and uh, talk more about um, the adventures in the van. But in the meantime, I'm using different content. So you all stay tuned for the pictures. Thanks for joining us. And if you don't care, please subscri subscribe and click that thumbs up button. I would really appreciate it. See you later. Bye-bye.